A couple of days ago, uh, some creationist know-nothing shared this image, revealing how they don't know anything about taxonomy or paleontology at all, which is fine, but don't profess to know more than the experts about subjects who've never studied. They don't know what evolution is, they don't know what a dinosaur is, and they don't know what the word placebo means. Now, all four of these animals are diapsids, technically reptiles, even the bird. The reptile family divided into two main groups, lepidosaurs and archosaurs. At top right is a mosasaur, which is a lizard, an actual lizard. Its closest living relatives are the giant monitor lizards like Komodo dragons and such. They are lepidosaurs, having three chambered hearts. These other three animals are all archosaurs, with four chambered hearts. Archosaurs divided into two main groups, too. Cruitarsi and Avametatarsalia. Cruitarsi includes crocodilians and a whole lot more extinct crocodilomorphs and similar looking ancient monstrosities than you could likely imagine. Now, these were evidently cold blooded, just like their modern descendants are today. Avametatarsalia, on the other hand, were largely warm blooded and often bore some sort of plumage feathers, or at least pycnofibers, hair like follicles that could become feathers. The parent category of Adametatarsalia includes two daughter groups. Pterosaurs appeared in the fossil record first, and then dinosaurs emerged soon after. And since pterosaurs are in the sister group to dinosaurs, then obviously they are not dinosaurs themselves. There are a lot of specific criteria to diagnose whether an animal is a dinosaur or not, and these traits do not describe pterosaurs. I have a video playlist going over each of these criteria in detail, sufficient to prove that uh, birds are in fact dinosaurs. Not just that they descended from dinosaurs, but that they are still dinosaurs right now. And this meme reminded me of when I had to explain to the convicted fraud and charlatan Kent Hovind that dinosaurs are not just lizards that got real big. Let me play you that clip. Let's continue here. Hovind also thinks that reptiles never stop growing. Hoven thinks that reptiles never stop growing. Do reptiles ever stop growing? According to Indiana Public Media, the skeletons of most mammals reach a certain size and then stop growing. However, many animals, including some mammals, keep growing throughout their lives. Kangaroos, for example, just keep growing and growing until they die. Let me continue the quote here. Most fish, amphibians, lizards, and snakes are also indeterminate growers, which means they don't stop growing. Mr. Nelson, you said Hoven thinks reptiles never stop growing. No, Hoven knows reptiles never stop growing. Study your science, Mr. Nelson. Okay, But many reptiles, all reptiles today never stop growing until they die, of course. So don't say Hoven thinks that. That is a scientific fact. They don't. Neither do kangaroos, by the way. So study it out before you accuse me of being stupid about this. I have studied the facts, and you are inexcusably stupid. I was making a statement in two parts that you believe that since lizards never stopped growing, they eventually became dinosaurs, which is idiotic. I dabbled in herpetology once upon a time with a few exotic lizards, so of course I know about reptiles being indeterminate growers, just like human ears and noses never stop growing, yet we never turn into trolls because the growth rate slows down so much. And while my Malaysian water monitor can reach 9 feet in length, they usually don't get much bigger than 7 feet. They'll never get as big as Nile crocodiles, and a Jackson's chameleon will never get as big as the veranda, no matter how long it lives. It certainly wouldn't be as big as a Triceratops and could never be confused with a Triceratops even if it could be that big. The first glance at their skeletons should tell you that. And that dinosaurs are just modern lizards that lived too long and got real big. No, I've never said dinosaurs are modern lizards. I, dinosaurs are reptiles, that's what the word means, dinosaur, terrible reptile, terrible, uh, so, terrible lizard. You're backpedaling now. Shall we listen to earlier comments? And lizards got huge. Did you know reptiles grow all their life? They never stop growing? I think before the flood, when people lived to be 900, the reptiles would get to be really big. Really big. <laughs> I think dinosaurs were big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve. The word dinosaur means terrible lizard. And that would be a terrible lizard if it's about 80 feet long. You can buy these at the pet store today. It's called a Jackson Chameleon. Got three horns on his face. 
I bet something similar to that, if you let it live 900 years, it would get to be a triceratops. Hmm? Jackson chameleon is a very interesting little creature, has three little horns, looks like a miniature triceratops. So is it the same thing as they're finding the bones of? I don't know, possibly. I don't think there's any way to know that for sure, unless they happen to find a triceratops that is not fossilized, and certainly dinosaur bones have been found that are not completely fossilized, even some with blood vessels inside. So. Maybe there'd be enough there to do a DNA test. That'd be interesting. So I can't answer the question, but I certainly think it's, it's uh, uh, interesting, the resemblance showing that there uh, are that type of creature with three horns still alive today. So could it be? Probably. Couldn't prove it. Okay. Yes, I can prove that dinosaurs are not lizards. Well, it is true that Sir Richard Owen coined the word dinosaur to mean terrible lizards, or more accurately, fearfully great lizards. He did so with deliberately deceptive, religiously motivated agenda. Owen was a creationist like you, except that he wasn't like you. He knew stuff. In fact, he was the leading authority on paleontology in the world in his day. Though he was also cruel, crooked, and corrupt. He knew better than anyone from first-hand experience that the world was ancient and had seen many successive ages with different environments preceding the age of men. He had personally seen substantial proof of that. He also knew at first glance that dinosaurs were not lizards. The first dinosaur ever identified as such was Iguanodon, and when all they had were teeth and a bit of vertebrae, they thought it would look like a gigantic lizard, just like those cheesy old movies. But once they had a pelvis, all that changed because the legs of these animals were columnous, supporting the weight from directly beneath like mammals, on feet that pointed forward rather than splayed out like modern reptiles, and their skeletons were hollow like birds. Now, based on that, Owen classified the first three known dinosaur species as a group distinctly different from any other reptile yet known, and more closely aligned with crocodilians than lizards. And just so you know, Dinosaurs, pterosaurs, phytosaurs, and a slew of crocodilomorphs you can't even imagine are all in the archosaur branch of the reptile family tree, according to their physical characteristics. None of these have a parietal eye, for example, like lizards do. So plesiosaurs, placodonts, phenodonts, and lizards are all the way on the other side, being as far removed from dinosaurs as it is possible to be. Owen believed that God was an imperfect tinkerer who got better with practice, and that God would release new and improved models whenever the old ones wore out. And that meant that the more recent animals had to be the better ones. See, his religious convictions would not allow him to accept the evidence that dinosaurs and pterosaurs were warm-blooded, bird-like, and much more advanced, and more than a match for any modern mammal, and not just because they were bigger, but because pound for pound they were lighter, faster, and more efficient than any mammal, which means that they certainly weren't lizards. Inside and out, dinosaur digestion, respiration, and reproduction was more like that of birds. This realization drove Owen to misrepresent the data, to deliberately lie about the evolution of birds, and to portray dinosaurs as cold-blooded, sluggish, lumbering beasts, even though his contemporaries were already proving him wrong about that. Eventually, he was dishonestly dismissed from the Royal Society for lies and plagiarism. But the stigma he promoted about the image of dinosaurs and pterosaurs persisted for more than a century. If you had ever studied paleontology in any country like you pretended, you'd know that dinosaurs cannot be mistaken for lizards, except by the uneducated laity proudly displaying their ignorance as if it were knowledge.